All right, now there was this, um, if you guys remember, there's a transformation of a, uh, of, you know, a princess kissed a frog and the frog transformed into a prince. And it was a really amazing thing. We talk about transformations all the time where, you know, if you guys ever seen the movie Transfer, uh, Transformers, right? You know, these regular objects transform into these machines and everything and they're fighting. Now, Nicholas, um, what I wanted to tell you about was there was a, a story um, about a long time ago. What there was is there was this equation and the equation wanted to be transformed into an ellipse. But the problem was they weren't really liked by the rest of their peers because they didn't look like them. So what happened was we went through the transformations to transform the equation or this uh, into this ellipse so then it could be like the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how that transformation went. So back when the ellipse was born, the ellipse took on the form like this, which is kind of a little ugly, right? It doesn't really look very nice. Um, and you know, it has all these nice big numbers into it. So a lot of people didn't want to talk to it. They didn't really think it was cute. Um, they just kind of avoided it, right? And maybe some of you have felt like that before. It, you know, it just went, when it would go out, just people didn't want to talk to it or deal with it because it's like, oh my, that is just way too much stuff. However, the parents knew there was an option. They knew that they could help them transform into an ellipse like everybody else. So one of the first parts of that process is to make sure, you know what, let's rearrange you so you at least have your X's and your Y's together, right? It's having your left arm with your right arm. Right? Let's put those at least together. So the first thing they started off when the ellipse was very little is they rearranged their terms so the ellipse would have at least be a little symmetrical with its terms. All right? So they rearranged the X and the Y's. Now, what they were having trouble with, uh, the American doctors. So what they had to do is they had to go um, out of the country to kind of say, you know, how can we fix this? We know that an ellipse does not carry an equation that looks like this, right? Ellipse had, those, had that equation of X squared, um, X minus H squared, and Y minus K squared. So this doctor said, you know what? I, they don't complete the square in America. However, an international doctor would say, hey, you know what? All you need to simply do is complete the square. But before we complete the square, we kind of notice that no other, no other ellipse equals zero, does it? No. So what we're going to do is let's kind of get rid of this. Let's cut this off and put it to the other side. Yes? What country did they That's disclosed. That's, we can't talk about that. So what we're going to do is let's subtract 436 to the other side. Now, rather than rewriting the whole equation, I'm just going to keep it. I'll just rewrite it. So the first thing they did is they kind of cut off that um, bit little, they cut off the 436, so therefore we have minus 436, okay? So now we have all the x's and the y's, but they couldn't go and complete the square in America, so they had to go outside of it, all right? And the doctor in the outside, because the Americans were like, ah, this is way too much completing the square. But the international doctor said, hey, completing the square is not bad as long as you're safe. You use sterile, you use sterile instruments, it's okay. So to complete the square, now that at least the x's and the y's are organized together, now they could factor out those common terms, right? Because remember, you can't complete the square when you have your coefficients of your quadratic terms. So I have x squared plus 25 out of that is going to be 100x, 10x, um, plus here I have to factor out a 9, y squared minus 4y. You could, but for completing the square, that's not what we're trying to obtain. We're not trying to factor. We're just trying to factor out that first term out of the first two because when completing the square, we want to create a perfect square trinomial. So yeah, you can factor it out, but that's not just what we're trying to obtain. So now, this is still at the International Hospital. So now they finished completing the square process, kind of like going under surgery for this little, little um, ellipse that just wasn't in the right format. So now, by completing the square, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you need to take the middle term, divide it by 2, and square it. So therefore, I have x squared plus 10 divided by 2 is 5. five. Um, sorry. Plus 25. Then over here, I have 9 times y squared minus, and then I'll just do negative 4 divided by 2 squared, which equals? All 
All right, and then remember, ladies and gentlemen, since I'm adding 25 to this side, but that 25 is really being multiplied by 25, right? So let's kind of eliminate this. So therefore, I have minus 436 plus 25. That's being multiplied by 25. And then plus a 4, that's being multiplied by a 9. So I have negative 436 plus 25 times 25 plus 4 times 9. And when you get that, I believe 25, 25, we talked about 625. 4 times 9 is 36. Add them all up, I believe you get 225. So we get 25 times x plus 5 squared plus 9 times um, y minus, because now I'm, I'm factoring these to their, right? So we created the perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial factors to a binomial squared. Y. This is y minus 2 squared equals 225. All right. Um, and that actually is the problem asking, is it asking a graph or they're asking to figure that out? You have to keep your story. I'll try it. OK. Yeah, we're going to graph. No, well, yeah, and still, so now they go and complete it, right? Yep. Yes, but there's no square roots that we need to be doing right now. Hold on with me. So they get back to America, all right, Juliana, and they figure out that, so he goes back from, gets back from surgery from the transformations, and it looks pretty close, right? Pretty close, but it's not exactly the same, Alex. So the ellipse is still not there. So they go through kind of their teen years, and then finally they hear about another doctor that can help them fix them out. They can help them get into that standard form and make them look like an ellipse. So remember, he said, you know, you're equal to 225. You need to be equal to 1, right? That's what ellipses are equal to. They're equal to 1. Yes? So they divided by 225 to get it equal to 1. And that means they need to equal the 225 over here and 225 over here. So by dividing by 225, now the ellipse equals 1. And then they reduced 9 over 225. So 225 divided by 9 equals huh? 25. So now I have y minus 2 squared over 25 plus 25 divided by 225 divided by 25 equals 9. So now this little ellipse. Hey, now they at least carry up the format. But they still don't look like everybody. They still don't take that nice shape. But now they have an equation. So then the parents are like, this is great. You know, now, I know, now we know what we can do. We can just help you out. So eventually, so once they graduated high school, now the ellipse took their form and said, you know what, hey, I know where my center is now, right? I've never been able to find my center. Now I know my center, which is at negative 5, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. And then they say, you know what? what, how long are my arms? I know now how long my arms are. My arms are now going to be, I know that, which, are, which one's longer? Your arms or your legs? Your legs, right? Well, I don't know, whatever this, maybe this ellipse was a little bit different. But you can see they're longer for this ellipse. Okay, this ellipse is longer vertically than they are horizontally, right? So we could say this is your a squared, and this is your b squared. So a squared equals 25. So that means a, a equals 5. So then from my center, right? So now we need to determine. So I look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Since my a squared is under my y, does that tell me that my vertical axis symmetry is vertical? I'm sorry, my major axis is vertical or horizontal? vertical, right? Whenever your a squared, the larger number is under your y, that means your um, major axis is now vertical. So now you know that if here's my center, since my major axis is vertical, a is the distance from the center to your vertices. So I'm just going to go up 5. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I can go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? Because these are all now on your major axis. So now the ellipse is like, I know now what my major axis is. So I know, hey, from here to here, I'm 25, right? But then how far am I out this way? 
Well, they know that's your b squared. b squared equals 9, therefore b equals 3. So that means left and right from your center, you're going to go over 3, 1, 2, 3, and left 3, 1, 2, 3. Right? Now, that gives us the outer shell. But we're still missing one very, very important part about the ellipse, right? If it looks like an ellipse, talks like an ellipse, you might think it's an ellipse, but there's one exact important characteristic we've talked about, right? Because what really gives somebody their identity? That face, right? Thanks, Alex. I, I don't know where that came from. But yeah, that, that face. And guess what, what the face of the ellipse was? The foci, right? Once you give them their foci, now they have their identity. Now, to find our foci, we know that a squared equals b squared plus c squared. And we know that a squared is 25, b squared is 9, and we need to figure out what c squared is. So I subtract 9, subtract 9, and I get 16 equals c squared. I take the square root, and c equals 4. Now, here's the difference. Is my C going to go up or down or left or right? Up or, down. up or down, right? Because your foci, your vertices, all lie on that major axis. So I need to go up 4, down 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So now I have the foci, the center, the vertice, vertice, covertice, and covertice. And guess what? Now. The ellipse lives happily ever after.